Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass, back after a couple of weeks away. This week we're going to look at probably the most famous bass chord riff of all time by a player that I'm embarrassed to say that I'm yet to cover on the channel. It's the main line from School Days by the legendary Stanley Clark. As always, the tab and cheat music is all there over at TalkingBass.net, just click that link in the info below. Also, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Then also remember to check out the free Talking Bass membership over at the website, where you'll find a whole community of over 100,000 bass players chatting in the forums and groups, as well as all the other learning resources and downloads like the Scale Reference Manual eBook. Remember, it's all free, so just sign up today and join a great bass community. So, School Days is played around 140 40 beats per minute and it sounds like this. School Days is in the key of A, but there is a little bit of a flat 7 in there to give us a little bit more of a a dominant 7 feel at the end of the line. Obviously, the riff is made up of a succession of chords, which guitarists are most likely to refer to as power chords. Power chords are basically 5 chords, or 5th chords, meaning they're made up of a root and a perfect 5th interval. So if we take an A here at the 7th fret of the D string, and then we work up 5 notes of the A major scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we find an E at the 9th fret of the G string, so that's our perfect fifth. So we hold both of those notes down using the first and the fourth finger, so that's the index and the pinky, and that's our five chord, and you can pluck it with the first and second fingers of the picking hand like this, or you can strum with the fingers, uh, or the fingernails, like this. Now when strumming chords like this, I tend to place the thumb, or anchor the thumb, resting over the A and E strings to avoid any residual noise from the ringing open strings. So I hold a loose fist, place that thumb there, and then I just strum outward with the fingers. So just try strumming that chord, and then move it around a little. Okay, and you'll notice that it's a great chord for creating lines we're basically harmonizing a melodic line in strict parallel movement. So you can just move it around, creating whatever line that you want, and it'll always sound quite cool. And this is why it's so popular in rock and metal guitar. It's got a really beefy, powerful sound, and you don't have to worry too much about all that theory stuff, like keys and scales and notes and music. So, once you feel okay with that power chord, you can just work through School Days. Now, it's worth mentioning that Stanley really plays around with the basic outline of this riff. He barely ever plays it the same, so I'm going to show you the opening riff, and then a couple of different ways that you can change it up. So, we start with the A power chord there, that we just played, so 7th fret D string and 9th fret on the G string. And then we come down to the F sharp, so this is going to be 4th fret D string, 6th fret on the G string, so and then down to the E there. So we've got E, second fret of the D string, and B at the fourth fret of the G string. So that's the first three chords there, and each one just on the beat. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Next we drop down to a D, which is the open D string, and then the A at the second fret of the G string. And just before that, because we're going to be playing that on the beat of the next bar on beat one, uh, we have this little open D leading into it. Now I'm going to pluck that with the finger, but he could be plucking it with the fingers however he's playing it, because he could be moving the hand in and out. You just have to make sure to place that little D in there to anticipate the open D chord. So. Then on the second beat of that bar, we have two eighth notes. Okay, so we've got F sharp there, so again, fourth fret D string, sixth fret of the G string, and then down to that E, second fret D string, fourth fret on the G string. But that first chord there, that F sharp, is almost played as uh, ghost notes, so it's very sharp. Not sharp in terms of the pitch, but just sharp in terms of the attack, so. You know, even if you don't uh, play it as actual notes, just as ghost notes, you know, you can, it still has that same effect. So, so cut that nice and short. And the same can be said 
sort of, for the first two chords in there. So, so when you're playing those first two chords, the A and the F sharp there, you want to play them quite staccato. So, so a lot of attack there. So up to that point we have, again, next we play the open D chord again, and this is going to be anticipating the third bar, so we're going to be on the end of, uh, of beat four, so all of that together, three, four, and, okay. Next we have this little move of, so this is basically a grace note, so we play the E power chord and we slide it up into the F sharp, up a whole step, but it's done on the beat and it's very quick there, just leading in, okay, and then we play the E again straight after, so, so. Finally we have this move of, and this is basically a C power chord down to an A power chord. So C and G, so third fret, A string, fifth fret, D string. Then we've got the A power chord, open A string, second fret of the D string for the E. And when I play this, I tend to bar that first finger across on the D and the G string so that we've got A, E, A rather than A, E, you know, and then just hoping that we don't hit the open G there. You can just catch that G string with the underside of the finger to mute it off, but if you just bar it across it's fine because you just get this big fat power chord, so that's cool. And then leading into the C power chord, again you'll hear a little open A in there, and you know whether he's playing that as a strum or like I'm playing here as a you know finger picked, it doesn't really matter. So. Also, when you hit that C power chord, he tends to slide it down, okay? Which could be just as a consequence of him moving the fingers to go down to the A, but either way, you can hear that slide in there, okay? So, all together, very slowly, two, three, four. That's the opening line. Now if you listen to how Stanley plays the riff after that, you'll notice that he often anticipates the first open D chord at the end of the first bar. So instead of this, you get this. He'll also sometimes substitute full eighth notes for the grace notes in bar three. So instead of this, you might get this. And as one final tiny change, he often won't play any open A string before the C chord leading into the final bar. So instead of this, we get this. At the end of the day, it's just a set of chords that you can play around in any way that you like. Try that opening line as a strict exercise and then just play around with it in your own way. That's Stanley's approach, so, you know, go with it. So you want to get that whole riff under your fingers, just playing it slow and out of time, away from tracks or anything like that. So maybe very slow like this. And then just gradually build up speed until you get it up to. To help with playing along to the drum beat, I've provided two different tracks, one at 120 beats per minute and one at 140. So let's have a listen to that at 120 beats per minute. Now let's try full speed 140.
Okay, so that's School Days. Let me know if there are any other Stanley Clark tunes that you'd like me to cover, and remember the lesson material and tracks are all there over at Talking Bay, so just click that link in the info below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and sign up to the Talking Bass Network and membership to gain access to a massive community of like-minded bass players and a ton of bass practice resources and downloads. Okay, I'll see you next week.